Hi everyone, my name is Maria. As Amanda said, I am a project advisor here at Advisacon. Uh, I do all sorts of things from project management, project configurations. I work a lot with Power BI as we'll be talking about today. Um, I'm also a Microsoft certified professional and just a little tidbit about me today is I am also the owner of our Advisacon mascot. This is my little this is my little Samoyed Ahsoka. She is our unofficial therapy dog, and that is a little bit about me today. So what we will be talking about today is what's new with Power BI. There's a lot going on that's new, but I'm going to be focusing on three main things. I'm going to jump right into a demo today, kind of showing you around, showing you the Power BI reports that can be used for project online, also a little bit for project for the web. After that, if we have some time, I will be answering some questions for you guys. So let's just hop right into what's new with Power BI. So for those of you who watch the Power BI blog, you'll know that there's a lot of things being released. They have constant updates. I think there's at least one or two posts a month about what's been added to Power BI. But these are the three things that I wanted to touch on today. So First off, there is a new workspace that has been available to upgrade to in Power BI Online. These Power BI, this new workspace gives you multiple, this gives you, um, updates your workspace access lists and the roles have also been updated in this, in this um, update. <laughs> From now on, those who are admins are gonna be actually called owners of the groups. And with this update, Office 365 groups is actually no longer connected to the workspace in Power BI. They still work together, but now if you, if you use this upgrade, when you delete a workspace, it won't delete the Office 365 group, or if you delete the group, it won't delete the Power BI workspace. Now, just so you guys are aware, this update does not support contact content packs. Just so you guys, the update will try to preserve the content pack that you guys have created, but that you will no longer be able to update those content packs. So for the end users, after you guys would apply this update, just so you know, there isn't really any um, experience change. You'll have the same experience, but it provides these updates and it disconnects, well, it, it no longer ties the workspace to the Office 365 group. Um, and if we have a chance today, I will show you how you guys can apply that upgrade. And also, so you should be aware, this upgrade is applied one workspace at a time. So you would do it for each individual instead of the entire group. And you can't apply this workspace um, upgrade for the entire group. Next is the preview of an updated ribbon. So Power BI now has, you have access to apply a new updated ribbon. This ribbon has friendlier names, it has tool tips, it has additional tabs. So some of the tabs have, some of the capabilities have been taken from one tab and applied to new ones. There's a new insert tab. There's a theme gallery now in, in view. There's also, you'll notice in other Microsoft applications, there's contextual tabs. So if you clicked a certain feature in Word, for example, sometimes the format tab will come up or the picture tab. In Power BI now with this new tab, you'll have options to a format tab and a data drill tab. I believe there's also a table formatting tab, contextual tab. So they've taken some of the options that were in modeling in the previous ribbon and have actually spread them out in these format data and drill tabs and have applied a couple other things. Lastly, um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about is the Microsoft updated, I wrote app, but it's really a template. So I think it was like nine, 10 hours ago, a template was released from Microsoft for Power BI that's applicable with both Project Online as well as Project for the Web. So we're gonna get to open that up a little bit and peek around of what's been applied to that um, and, and then get to show you kind of the new features that come with it. So before, with no further rush, we are gonna just hop right into the demo and I'm going to be opening up I wanted to first show you guys the Microsoft Project Online application. So the Microsoft Project Online has an app that you can deploy to your guys' Power BI environment. And I'm going to be opening it up and showing you guys how to add that if that is something you are interested in. So I'm gonna go ahead, let me just pull over the web browser. 
There we go. So for those of you who are interested in the Microsoft app that is been that is available, um, this is how you would grab it. So we're going to go ahead and open up. So you'll notice before anything, actually before I get jump into this. So I'm in the Power BI environment online and I am in the app section. In the app section, I have the option to get more apps from Microsoft. So I'm going to just go ahead and click that. And to get this application from Microsoft, you're actually going to want to be in the app section, not the My Organization section. And you'll see it's right here, the Microsoft Project for the Web app, or Project Web app, I apologize. And then you would go ahead and get it now. You would apply the link for the data source that you'd want to connect it to. and um, then you would be able to start viewing your projects in it and any of the dashboards as well as the reports that were available with this application. Um, I'm not actually going to go into it too much into detail today because of the new template that's been released. I'm going to put my focus a little more on that. But just so you guys are aware, for those of you who want to use the Microsoft Project Web App, this is where you will find it and you can get it now and apply your links from Project Online to this application. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of there. So from here, I'm going to actually go ahead and open up the Advisacon, um, the Advisacon report pack. So what we did is we took the Microsoft report pack and customized it to the majority of our clients' needs, something that applies to pretty much everyone, but also um, is easy to customize for those who need certain things. For example, I've switched out different fields up here for clients, um, added different columns that were more applicable to them, but this is the one we've created. And you'll notice in the in the whole view here, this is the update updated ribbon. For those of you who've used Power BI before, you'll notice that the icons here have been updated and they're using friendlier terms. For example, transform data, instead of editing your data queries, transforming data is how you would edit your queries to customize these reports in the, for customizing the data set. You've also got the refresh button, it looks just a little newer. And you'll notice as I'm clicking these things, here are the contextual tabs. You've got format, we've got data and drill. Modeling, you'll notice, has um, less options than it did before. And if we go to view, you'll see these are the themes now. One of the benefit now of the updated rip of the updated ribbon is tooltips. You can hover over and it will give you the updated tooltips of what things do. So switch to phone layout, you've got filters, so you can show and hide the filter pane while editing. So I can just go ahead and take that off if I wanted to. You'll notice now just a tiny bit more space or I can go ahead and add it back. Um, but now with this new with this new ribbon now you'll get, it provides explanations for each of the buttons, especially for those, for example, for a moment, transform data kind of threw me off because I wasn't used to it. And being able to have this tooltip of using the Power Query Editor to connect, prepare, and transform data really helped kind of get me familiar with the new setup here. So for those of you who are interested in applying it, um, it did not come up on my project desktop all on its own. I had to add it. To add it, I go to File, Options, um, Let's see, options and settings. You'll go to options here and go ahead and it's just loading. Let's see, there we go. And from there you would go to the preview features where I chose to get the updated ribbon. And with the updated ribbon, you'll have to, once you request that feature, then you'll be able to um, you'd be able to, you'd have to close down your Power BI reports and then open it back up. So it won't be applied immediately. You'll have to close all of your open desktops, open desktop views, and then restart the application, just so you guys are aware. So focusing a little bit more back on the report, this is the portfolio dashboard. So for those of you who aren't aware, um, the dashboard dashboards are different than reports. Reports are the reports you build together. That's what you will see here. This is where you would add the add the different slicers. You would add the different views and all, and you'd sort the information to what you're looking for. 
but the dashboard itself is where you cherry pick certain things from the reports and kind of accumulate them all together to have that one view, that kind of overall general view. In our own custom report, we've got the portfolio dashboard here. You'll see in this dashboard, we present all of our projects. This is from our demo environment. You've got the department project type you can filter on. Um, for those of you who are not aware, you can actually hold the control button and click more than one option. So I'm just clicking three, it's a little slow. And once it is finished loading, it'll apply and take look for those three project types only. There we go. For when you're looking around in these kind of reports, you have you can click on certain items and they will filter out they because they are all connected right here. So if I clicked the blank ones or if I wanted to just look at concept, concept would be more applicable. It applies that and now you can see the project count. We have 18 concept um, those that are in the governance phase of concept, we have 18 of them. The project cost is 3 million. We've got quite the cost variance with 447,000 and a um, lot of project work hours, et cetera. And how I know that these are all connected is one, they all update whenever I click one of the, the visuals and one of the, like for example, infrastructure and deployment, it filters out. And I can see those connections by going to edit interactions. Editing interactions shows me what's kind of filtering together. So you'll see this little button here. If I were to click or unclick it, it tells Power BI that I want these to be part of what's being filtered. So it's a, I apologize, it's behaving a little slow right now. So I'm just gonna move on to the next thing. But to edit it, to kind of edit the interactions between the slicers here, you would click the edit interactions in the format button, in format contextual tab. We'll turn that back off again. So there are other reports available in the report pack. So we've got the portfolio timeline, um, as well as portfolio costs. And again, I apologize, this is a little slow today. There we go. So portfolio cost kind of takes all of the projects together and it looks at by top projects for cost. The entire portfolio cost we're looking at here is um, about 9 million. The cost health, so you can see a lot of these are all of the cost health that are in the red section. So I believe that's about 20% above baseline. And you can see all of the projects there and the cost type that is being applied to these projects. So if any of you are interested in this report pack specifically, feel free to email us. We love helping you out with it, or if you want us to help you customize your own, this is something we love to provide. We find, the, I love looking at these reports. They're just so interesting and they're visually interesting and help you kind of get a better perspective of where all of your projects are at. Um, another great report that we have together here is the portfolio milestones. So look what it's looking at here is all of the milestones coming up in the next 30 days. And right now this is looking at all of the projects. You can see all of the milestones planned by projects, different ones here. We've got, um, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and filter by project type. Also you can filter, we've got by project owner as well. So if I wanted to just see Kevin's projects, I could pull those up here and all of the milestones that are associated with his projects. Perfect. So now what we, um, you'll able, be able to see each of these. Also, just so you know that these links actually function, if I were to click that link, it would open up a web browser to this milestone. Um, also included in these report packs, we've got portfolio risks, um, so we could go all the way to resource availability. Resource availability is extremely useful because it gives you a heat map of who is over allocated when or who is under allocated. So as you'll see it's separated by month um, and it goes back, we recommend with these reports going back about three months and then going ahead 12 months. Um, so you can see right now, for example, Amy is over allocated by 10 hours in October she this month has 15 additional hours available so she is 
okay, she's got some extra hours there, but she's got only 15 more hours left to be planned for for the month. But you can see next month she's got 117 available. And you'll notice that when I clicked the number here, it, it narrows things down just to Amy. Which brings me to, we've got the legend up in these visuals. These legends, if I click them, will sort. So I need to unclick Amy. There we go. Will sort based on the color that I'm selecting. And again, I apologize, it's being a little slow today. Um, but you'll notice this one. There we go. These are all of the Academy of hours that have been allocated and the academy resources. Also another report that is available we have is the um, resource assignments. And again how to use these reports for when you're looking at them is clicking around at the you've got the different multiple names here you can look at you can click the different visuals and see for example who is in the professional services. Um, You've got Adam Barr, what tasks he's assigned to. You can see here how much of his work is completed. So not all of his tasks are completed, even though, for example, the finish date is 1030. This would be a scenario where you could go, hey, Adam, I'm seeing this task here that you've only got 12% complete, but the finish date was like two months ago. What's going on? That's what a great scenario of what you would use this for. And again, you can click these legends to get better color on the actuals versus the remaining work. Um, and also continue to filter using these filters up here. Now, you don't necessarily anymore have to use those filters up on the top. You now can use this filter bar here instead to filter on what's going on. And this filter is also available on the online version, which I'll bring up when we get to the new template for Microsoft. Um, lastly, before I jump into the new template for Microsoft, I'd like to show you the project status. Project status is report is extremely useful because it lets you see all of the projects, where they are at, if they've got completed milestones, if they've got upcoming milestones, how complete are they? And you'll see that these projects currently, we are just filtering on this one project here. But if I wanted to, we could look at different ones by again clicking, so I could just click one, I could do the acquisition target analysis, or I could hit control and I could hit many. Um, also, not clicking any of them defaults to all. There we go. You can see there was the project description a minute ago. Um, see that the one currently that we have for the acquisition target analysis, the project manager is Kevin. We can see that he is on work and on schedule, but unfortunately his cost is higher than it should be. And also a benefit is you can see last published. So if he hasn't looked at it in two months, maybe we should have do a meeting on it and see why that is. Um, and finally, there's risks and issues. So if any of you are using the risks and issues list in a project online, you would see those here in the issues list in the project risks here. And I love this risk matrix. It's just such a great visual for where you're at. Um, and you can see you've got technical project management, organizational, external. Again, I can click those and it'll filter out the whole page. So moving on, I'm actually going to bring up the, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the new template from Microsoft that was deployed earlier today. So this is the desktop view. I also have it open in the project or the desktop online view as well. Sorry, the Power BI online view where um, you can see they've got these updated visuals. You've, they've got a couple of slicers here to filter, but if we looked at the filters over here as well, they've got more that you would be able to utilize. And um, they've got plenty of different reports. So we've got the portfolio dashboard for one, and then the timeline has been updated. Give it a minute to load. It's just a lot more detail and the visuals have just been, have been extremely updated. And um, it's also a lot easier to edit, and this doesn't. This applies both to Project Online and Project for the Web. So one thing you do need to know is when, if you choose to use this template, you'll need to have the link to your common data, common um, common data service, and you'll find that in Power Apps. If you go to Power Apps and you open up the common data service, 
and you look in the upper right hand corner, you'll see in, I believe it's parentheses, the, the name of the common data service that you would use. So you would use that name, you do dot, if you're in the Northwest, it's CRM. Um, I can, if you have any questions about your environment, feel free to ask after, um, and we can talk a little bit more about that then. But there, you'll need that link as well as the link to your, um, whether it's the project for the web app or project online. We've got multiple different uh, reports here. See that they've got some, they just have some improved visuals too. Looks great. I love it. So we're actually going to, so before we move on anymore, I'm actually going to take this to the web application. I'm going to open that up. So we're going to go here. And this is what this looks like from the web application. So we've got the two filters here that we can use. Um, you could grab for project progress started, not, not started in progress or complete. Um, also got project manager. And you would go in and you can edit you can also edit the reports too. If you're the one who deployed the report, you can limit, you have limited edit ability. If you, for example, deployed this report to your environment and then saw that you didn't want project progress, you wanted something else, you can hit the edit button um, along the lines. I think it's in, I'm in view mode, so I wouldn't be able to do that, but there's usually an ellipses over here where I would be able to choose and edit the report. Um, so, also available, you'll see portfolio milestones, and we've got resource dashboard. You guys, the and it looks how it looks up here. Um, before we go any further, the last thing I wanted to show you, and before we touch questions, is how to update your workspace. So, for those of you who want to apply the update to your workspace, we can. Go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead to a different workspace and go to, I'm actually gonna go to the Easter weekend preparation. Um, for those of you who are interested in updating your workspace, how you would do that is you would go to the workspace, you would say edit this workspace, go to the advanced section here, and then choose to upgrade now. Now, just a reminder, the if you upgrade this workspace, it will no longer use content packs, but it does have updated access lists. The roles are updated. Um, this will allow you to delete this workspace without deleting the Office group, or for example, deleting the Office 365 group without deleting the workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and open the floor for questions. Amanda, do we have any questions? We have a couple questions kind of on the same topic. Um, people mm -hmm. are interested if you can touch on Agile implementation. So that's a really broad broad question. So for Agile implementation, um, do we have any specific questions on how on how that how they're looking for that information? Um, Yes, but let me open the floor really quickly for those of you listening, if you want to type in a question quickly around those um, parameters, and we will try to address that here. So as they're talking, I'll, I'll kind of try and cover it a little bit. So you'll notice here that for one of the project schedules, they're using milestones for sprint one complete. So if you were using um, milestones or tasks for um, using project online sprint, you would be able to see those tasks here and when they were accomplished. I'm not sure if we'd see the, you could apply a view to see the burn down rate, but I don't know if that's currently in the new the new report, let me kind of poke around and see. Um, but we could definitely, if you're interested um, in applying that and if you like this report or if you like the report pack that we do, then you feel free to send us emails and we can help you customize the report to add some, add some applicability to the Agile methodologies. Great. So Amanda, do we have any specific questions? Um, well, I have one here asking, if this works with all versions of project? That is a really good question. Um, it should. I haven't had any experience with it otherwise, but yeah, it should, as long as you're able to add the link to it, then you would be fine. You should be fine. And then um, a follow-up with that, if, how does this work with the new project for the web? 
Great question. So how this works for the project with the for the web, let me see if I can go ahead and just um, get this opened up. So what you would do is you'd add the link like you would with um, Project Online. So just really quick, I'm going to grab that. Just grab a blank slate. So it's just loading right now. I apologize. Power BI has chosen to be a little slow today. Um, so you would add the link to the um, to the environment that you want to be reporting on. So for example, for this report, I grabbed our project online environment because we have a great demo environment set up there that with a ton of ton of projects. And as this is loading, um, here we almost there you would then add the link to the project for the web home and you would all right let's see if i can drag this over okay so it opened up on my other screen but what comes out in front is the links you need to add so you would need to add the link for your common data um, service this is where you would add the location you can find in power apps this is where you would add your region. Since we're in the Northwest, west, it would be CRM. There are other regions in the area. And again, if you're interested in knowing what those are, that what your region would apply to for the common data service URL, just feel free to shoot us a, an email. And here is where you would add the link to your project for the web home environment. So I hope that answers that question. Yeah, I think we have time for one more. So we have um, someone wondering how to get the report pack. Yeah, so the report pack, let me see, I think I have the link up, is available off of GitHub. And again, if you're interested in getting it customized to your guys' environment, please reach out. We'd love to help you with that. So let me just go ahead and grab that link. So this is where I downloaded the report pack. You'll see it's the one that was three months ago, 12, 12 hours ago. There it is. So this is the, this is the web page where you can download the, the new template. Great. So, well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. So thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. We welcome your questions and feedback. And for more information, you can email us at contact at advisacon.com. If you're watching this recording on YouTube or another social media platform, please be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future uploads. On behalf of Advisacon, Maria, and myself, we thank you for joining us today and hope to see you participate in our future webinars. Have a great day, everyone.